This is commonly known as fistula, a single word, a thrill, a lot of fear. Obstetric fistula is one of the most serious and dangerous injuries that can occur during childbirth. It is a perforation between the vagina and the bladder or rectum caused by prolonged obstructed labor without obstetric care. Worldwide, more than 2 million women suffer from this disease and nearly 1 million of them are in Western Central Africa. This disease disrupts the lives of thousands of women and girls who find themselves excluded from society. As a matter of fact, these victims are stigmatized, rejected and abandoned by their own relatives. Sub-Saharan Africa is one of the most demographically dense parts of the world, with a population growth rate of 2.7% due to a total fertility rate of 5.2 children per woman, by far the highest of the world. The incidence of difficult deliveries is estimated at nearly 6,500,000 per year in low-income countries, resulting in a theoretical annual incidence of nearly 130,000 cases of obstetric fistula. In response to the predicament of these fistula victims, the UNFPA Regional Office for Western Central Africa, the United Nations Population Fund, and the First Lady of the Republic of Niger organized a roundtable discussion on March 23, 2001, in Niamey, under the theme Strengthening under the theme Strengthened and Expanded Partnership, Essential Leverage for the Elimination of Obstetric Fistula. The elimination of this pathology is a call to transform the world. Yes, as we talk about ending polio, HIV AIDS, and so many other sufferings, we must commit to stepping up our efforts to eradicate obstetric fistulas once and for all. No woman should endure any health problem while it can be avoided and treated. Our long-term goal must be to make the obstetric fistula problem as exceptional in developing countries as it already is in the developed countries. Indeed, to fight against obstetric fistula means to fight for the dignity of girls, for their well-being, for their fundamental human rights. This is the place to pay a well-deserved tribute to the United Nations Populations Fund, which in 2003 launched the global campaign to end obstetric fistula, campaign which turns around three strategic axes, prevention, treatment and socio-economic reintegration. Campagne qui s'articule autour de trois axes stratégiques, la prévention, le traitement et la réinsertion socio-économique. La fistule obstétrale demeure une très grande préoccupation dans les pays en développement. Obstetric fistula remains a major concern in developing countries where it is estimated that more than 2 million women and girls suffer from it. In West and Central Africa, the exact number of women with obstetric fistula is relatively unknown, even though it is a major health problem for them. On our continent, heads of states and governments have adopted a roadmap to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and the aspirations of the Africa we want by 2063. Therefore, universal access to reproductive health is fundamental for every individual. But all this will remain an illusion so long as the access to reproductive health stays limited, especially for our women. So the underlying causes of obstetric fistula have to be addressed and resolved. First ladies of Mauritania, Sierra Leone, Chad, Central African Republic, and Comoros participated in this virtual roundtable. They each took turns describing the situation of obstetric fistula in their respective countries and communicating the strategies put in place to fight against this disease. In the Republic of Chad, between 250 and 750 cases of obstetric fistula are not treated each year. Excellence, Mesdames les Premières Dames, chers sœurs, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres, mon frère Madingue Ngom, 
My brother, Mabigengam, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of the United Nations system, dear religious leaders, ladies and gentlemen, representatives of civil society, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, from 2012 to 2020, 2,373 cases of obstetric fistula were treated, which makes an average of 286 cases per year. The main problems recorded in the management of obstetric fistula in Chad are the insufficient functionality of the national program to fight against obstetric fistula, the insufficient subsidy of the National Fistula Treatment Center of Chad, which has not yet statue within the health system, the non-functionality of the provincial branches, the non-involvement of most of trained surgeons, barely two out of seven are operational in public structures. The number of obstetric fistula surgeons available in the country does not meet the expected need for fistula repair. Early marriage of young girls is one of the causes of the spread of obstetric fistula. Thus, the First Lady of Sierra Leone made a plea to stem the flow. In Sierra Leone, a lot of people will say there are different aspects of there are different reasons why um, people do have fistula. But I can assure you, one of the most or the number one reason why we do have fistula is um, teenage pregnancy. We have a very huge problem in Africa because if we don't tackle this, and I'm very pleased that um, Malaika has uh, decided that she is going to focus on this. We have to focus on early marriage. Early marriage is the biggest threat we have in Africa today. So my brother is there, Mambige, I'm saying to, to, to you, congratulations in supporting us first ladies. Congratulations in just the idea is a brilliant one. And knowing that we have a, a, an agency that we can talk to, knowing that we have an agency that we can call upon, you know, I am, I am happy. For me, it is not about the money because my relationship with you and FPS Sierra Leone is beyond money. Mauritania has developed a set of strategies to combat obstetric fistula since 2003. Despite this, every year an additional 150 to 300 women become obstetric fistula victims. The adoption of a fatwa by religious leaders against female genital mutilation the creation of a regional center of excellence for clinical mentoring of midwives in order to strengthen continuing education and promote the provision of quality reproductive health services. Reinforcement of surgical management and the offer of repair surgery to 635 women with fistulas the integration of obstetric fistula in indigent diseases with access to free care, including the socio-economic reintegration of women treated and cured of obstetric fistula. Through her foundation, Creed Occur, the First Lady of the Central African Republic, has put in place since 2017 a strategy to help women with fistula. <laughs> I have undertaken a certain number of actions to support the government in the fight against this coach, among which I have retained four main ones, namely first, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Population and the UNFPA, I took part in a discharge ceremony from a hospital in Bangui. Obstetric fistula carriers operated on and declared cured in 2017. Second, in part of the empowerment of its women, the Foundation Cri de Coeur d'une Mère, in partnership with the ILO and a training institution called the Central African Vocational Training and Employment Agency, CAVTEA, has transferred the capacities of some in entrepreneurship and financial support for income-generating activities. I also thank UNFPA, which facilitated these exchanges with my dear sisters and first ladies of Africa. Obstetric fistula remains a taboo in the commerce. 
This makes it difficult to identify victims. The other challenge is that health facilities are not adequate. The government Comorian has made it a priority to work in favor of the reduction of maternal morbidity through the strengthening of the reduction of maternal morbidity through the strengthening of destructive health capacities and their rehabilitation and equipment. It also emphasizes the training of qualified personnel in childbirth, including midwives, access to quality sexual and reproductive health services, including family planning, prenatal care, obstetric and neonatal emergency care, education and empowerment of women and girls to enrich their life prospects and delayed age of marriage and first pregnancy. In this way, I would like to salute here the action carried out by the UNFPA to support our country in its politic of fighting maternal mortality and morbidity including obstetric fistula as well as the technical and medical strategic support that it provides us to help us prevent and cure fistula. In West and Central Africa, low access to reproductive health services, the high prevalence of child marriage, 42%, and the female genital mutilation, 24%, which can reach 90% in some countries, are direct and indirect causes of the obstetric fistula in the region. In addition, the low school enrollment rate for girls is 24 percent. Since 2003, the United Nations Population Fund and its partners have been involved in the campaign to end obstetric fistula, during which approximately 85,000 women and girls have received reparative treatment. However, major challenges remain, particularly in the training of medical personnel. Le Niger nous a partager un peu leur expérience que il y a de cela quelques années ils ont Niger shared with us a little of their experience that a few years ago they made the decision to introduce fistula in their training curricula and this is a strategic approach that will help us a bit so that we won't depend on a rest of surgeons specializing in the field but not to make it a routine training in the training system, which therefore allows us to avoid that women wait for years to be treated or to be operated on. I think that this is a strategic approach that must be encouraged, that is necessary to share, that is necessary to replicate in other countries, and why not at the level of regional training structures? Because when, for example, doctors, nurses, midwives, and perhaps even the staff who work in the socio-economic fields, which support the reintegration of women victims of the fistula, will be trained sufficiently early in their careers, I think that we will be well equipped to quickly eradicate obstetric fistula. In their career, I think we will be well equipped to eradicate rapidement the fistula obstetrical. Out of the 30,000 women suffering from obstetric fistula in West and Central Africa, only 2,700 cases have been treated. This gap is due to the fact that the number of practitioners is far less than the demand. Generally, women go to official structures for them to be taken in charge, knowing that they live in rural areas and that most centers are in the urban areas, there is a huge accessibility problem for them. And when they visit centers that are located in their villages, the medical assistant can take care of her because of a lack of expertise on the nature of the disease. So, our strategy is to go to the different levels of the ladder to explain the health agents that when they detect what the patient suffers from, then the nursing process can be addressing medically.
And if they can't take care of the patient, there is the referencing, reprise. And if they can't take care of the patient, reprise. And if they can't take care of a patient, there is a referencing system in all countries. That's to say, if you detect a disease of level B, while you can't go beyond A, you reference him or her in a higher level, and so on. Which means that we need capacity reinforcement in all these levels. Another thing is whether we have to keep reinforcing capacities or not, but I think we must act through the initial training so that, be it midwives or nurses or doctors or surgeons, they will have the required competence to take patients adequately in charge. In the fight against obstetric fistula, the United Nations system is committed to accompanying victims so they can regain their dignity. Depuis 2018, le partenariat global est unique since 2018, the global and unique partnership that exists between the United Nations and the European Union has made it possible to support more than 20 countries in eliminating all forms of violence against women and girls with particular emphasis on their consequences among which the obstetric fistula. This is the spotlight initiative which aims to leave no one no girl, no woman on account. As part of the Spotlight program, I'm pleased to announce that Niger has received a contribution of more than 535 million CFA francs intended for the rehabilitation, equipment and upgrading of the National Reference Center for Obstetric Fistula in Niamey. I am happy to count on the presence and the mobilization of partners committed to success in the fight for the elimination in Niger. Fistula repair camps are an opportunity for victims to regain their dignity and normal life. President of the Tatali Iyali Foundation, which means family welfare in one of the Niger's national languages, the First Lady is active in the rehabilitation and reintegration of women with fistula. In Niger, medical and surgical care is free. The country has 11 treatment centers and 33 reprises. The country has 11 treatment centers and 23 active surgeons with an average treatment of 500 cases each year. On the occasion of the commemoration of the International Day of the Fight Against Obstetric Fistula in 2018, I launched the integration of the management of obstetric fistula in the curriculum of the training of surgeons and obstetricians, gynecologists. In the field of socio-economic reintegration, financial support is granted to women treated with obstetric fistula in order to make them independent and regain self-esteem. In Niger, an average of 200 cured women benefit from this support. It must be recognized that despite the progress recorded by our country in promoting maternal health, it is still estimated that between 700 and 756, the number of new cases of obstetric fistula recorded each year. And if Niger does not invest more in prevention, it would take 25 years to eradicate female genital fistula. Yet fistula can be avoided. In this perspective, our country adopted in 2006 a new national second-generation strategy covering the period 2016-2020 for the elimination of female genital fistula. This strategy being at the end of its implementation, Niger is considering its evaluation before proceeding to the development of a third generation of strategy for the period 2021-2025 and which will take into account the genital urinary prolapse. The root causes of obstetric fistula are sociocultural and economic in an environment where women's health depends on the decisions of others whose role is essential, such as poses, traditional chiefs, clerics, or in-laws. The case of Basira Haruna is a perfect illustration.
I had my first pregnancy at the age of 15. As I live in a large village with a health structure, I followed all my prenatal consultations. But in the tradition of my husband, the first child must be born into a family. This is how my family-in-law brought me to the village for my childbirth. It is a very remote village. We left Monday at 1 a.m. And I did all the labor on the way since it is very far from the health services. I was not transferred to a dispensary. Since I couldn't give birth, they prepared a cart to next day. The journey lasted six hours long before we arrived at the health center. I even lost consciousness on the way. When I woke up, I asked after my child. They told me he was born dead. Two weeks later, I started lose urine. I was very sick and I went to a confessional hospital. There, they diagnosed a fistula and told me to go to the health center in Maradi. So when I left for Maradi, I came across a fistula repair camp where they performed my first operation and it was not successful. Then, since I was closer to Nyame, I stayed in Nyame. That's how I sympathized with groups and I made my second intervention at the Nyame Health Center, and it was a success. There, I learned the sewing, knitting, and other activities. When I left the center, I was given 50,000 CFA francs for business and I invested in small ruminants. My first husband abandoned me after my first illness, but now I have remarried and I'm pregnant again. In fact, certain traditions do not favor girls' development and they are withdrawn from school at a very early age or are not educated at all. Invited on the round table on obstetric fistula in the presence of the First Lady of Niger, traditional leaders committed themselves to leading the fight to keep girls in school and in the fight against obstetric fistula. C'est une maladie qui nous préoccupe trop. It is a disease that worries us too much because young girls are abandoned when they have this disease. They are abandoned by their families. And there, we try to recover them so that we can first put them in care. We are in permanent contact with the population for early marriages and the education of the young girls. At our level, in the Doso region, Young girls are in school until the age of 18. We try to calm their families down so that they can study until that age. Early marriages are now eliminated in the Doso region. The June 8, 2018 resolution of the ECOWAS Economic Committee Assembly of Ministers of Health on the elimination of obstetric fistula calls on member states to make national investments and mobilize their resources to act together to eradicate fistulas in West Africa. This is to increase the participation of all stakeholders in maintaining and strengthening the capacity of integrating health systems in partnership with academic institutions, prevention, case detection, comprehensive surgical and non-surgical management, as well as social economic reintegration and rehabilitation of women treated for obstetric fistula in the region. Our overarching goal is to support countries to attain universal health coverage. And this includes provision of pregnancy-related care. We are also working to promote well-being, including working with the other development sectors and taking a people-centered approach which will contribute to preventing obstetric fistula and also treating its complications. Nous avons un programme que nous appelons l'éducation de la deuxième chance. We have a program that we call Second Chance Education, since some of these girls who have been operated on want to go back to school or at least get some training. This program aims to, at the social integration of unprivileged girls aged 15 to 25, who are either out of school or have never been there. It's implemented in six countries around the world. 
and mainly in Africa. Marginalized women are trained in income-generating activities and quality employment through education and especially vocational training called second chance. In nearly two decades now, West and Central Africa has developed a regional strategy through a regional plan that has led to increased community awareness of fistula and its consequences, the creation of treatment centers for the surgical management of obstetric fistula and the strengthening of the technical capacity of health professionals to manage obstetric fistula.